Okay, so welcome to 2021 question B2. The image on the right shows the, Im shows the car showroom in Qatar. We've got a series of intersecting planar triangular surfaces. B2 shows the plan and elevation of four intersecting triangular planes. Draw the horizontal and vertical coordinates for A, B, C, D and E are given. Okay, so partial coordinates for point A. F are also given. Part A, draw the given elevation and plan of the intersecting planes A, B, C, A, B, D and B, D. Okay, now sorry about the flickers in these videos. Uh, something I can do at the moment. Right, so I'm going to draw my X, Y line. So I'm going to draw a light line for my Y, Y line. This is where I'm going to go with my Y axis. Okay, so these are the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So the X, Y line, okay, is an edge U with the HP in elevation and VP in plan. And then the Y, Y line, okay, is an edge U at the end vertical plane in plan and then end elevation. So the X coordinate is how far from the end vertical plane you're going from. The Y coordinate is how far up from the horizontal plane you're going. And then the Z coordinate is how far out from the vertical plane you're going. At. So, A, right, I'm going at 145 for A. Uh, B, 130. C, 180. Good idea to write the letter with it. D, okay, 100 it. E145, okay, which is the same as A. And then F is unknown yet. Then, once I have them marked in, I just draw light vertical lines through them, and I'm going to be prepared to plot my Y coordinates on them. Right. So get ready to plot my y coordinates on these. So for D, the y coordinate is 60. That's point D. Okay, uh, point B, the y coordinate is 45. C, the y coordinate is 55 okay A and E the Y coordinate is 10 and 90 it's E and then the F coordinate is okay 10, altitude 10 we don't know where that is exactly yet Ten. Now, I'll obviously connect them together. So A B D These uh, D E B Okay B C A B C and then I can target the plan view. Okay, so the Z coordinate for A is seventy. So the Z coordinate for A is seventy. Okay, Z coordinate for B is 45. Okay, Z coordinate, uh, or sorry, Z coordinate for B is 40. Okay, Z coordinate for C is 30. 
So as you can see, there the arrows begin to make us to be looking at the y, y coordinates, which would be a fair disappointment in the exam to be putting in all that time and looking at the wrong one. So the Z coordinate for D is 20, and the Z coordinate for E is 10. So E is 10. Now, okay, I, have, I can join B, D, E, so I'll just move this in here so you can see better. So A, B, D. D E B Okay and A B C So there are the plan elevation of those planes thrown out and I will have to later do F. Now part B determine the dihedral angle between surfaces ABC and ABD. So I have to see the, the dihedral angle between surface ABC and ABD. Well the line of intersection between them is AB. You, uh, you have to check, is the line of intersection already a true length? And the answer is no, because it's not parallel to the XY line in either view. So it's not a true length. So now I have to get the true length of this line of intersection. Right, so I'm going to look perpendicular to the line of intersection, okay, AB, and I'm going to project, okay, perpendicular to that line of intersection, right? Okay, I'm just going to get my adjustable set square here as I have a to stop in the way. So I'm projecting perpendicular to the line of intersection AB, okay, from points A, B, C, and D. Now, why am I doing that? Because I need to find the true length of the line of intersection. So once I've projected perpendicular to the line, I'm going to, going to draw in an X1, Y1 line. And I'm going to take the heights from elevation. So I'm going to take the heights from elevation. So I'm going to take the height of B. So that's where B1 is going to be. I'm going to take the height of A. I'm going to take the height of D. Uh, A, B, C, D. Now I have C to do. So I'm going to take the height of C. Right, so that's A1, C1, B1, D1. So I'll surface ADB. So surface ADB. On surface A, B, C. Now here's the true length of the line of intersection. Now, so I have the true length of the line of intersection, so I'm going to project along this true length. And the reason why I'm going to project along that is the line of intersection will you project as a point once you look along its true length. And when you look along the true length of a line and it projects as a point, well then the surface that line rests on will project as a point. 
So if the line of intersection can uh, rest on both surfaces, they'll uh, simultaneously project as edges. And the dihedral angle is seen the view showing both planes as edges and the line of intersection is a point. Now there's my x2, y2 line. And I'm going to take the distances from my x2, y2 line back to plan. Now I'm just going to do in a datum line to make that less. So. Here's going to be D2 is going to be here. Oh, sorry. Uh, wrong distance there taken. Easily happened. I'm not taking my distances from my X2, Y2 line back to plan. That's just a repeat, that, a repeat then of what you would have been doing. It would just be a mirror image. So X1, Y1 line back to pl uh, plan. So take that distance there. There's D1. I take the distance for A and B, so they're projected. They're the same distance, so that's the reason why they're going to project as a point. Okay, and then C. So X1, Y1 line. There's an edge view of both surface there, surfaces there. And then you should label in your dihedral angle. Okay, you should give it a numerical value. So I'm getting 108 is 58 for mine. Now, next part. So the line is drawn from point E, and the line is parallel to line AC, and it intersects the horizontal plane at point P. Draw the projections of line EP, and determine its true inclination to the horizontal plane. Okay, determine its true inclination to the horizontal plane. So it's drawn from point E, parallel to line AC, uh, intersects the horizontal plane at point P. Draw the projections so the elevation and plan of line EP and determine its true inclination to the horizontal plane. So key principles are, okay, parallel lines are parallel in every orthographic view. Um, the horizontal plane projects as an edge view and elevation, and then, uh, then the true angle between a line and a plane is seen in the view shown the line is the true length and the plane as an edge. So I'm going to draw a line parallel to line AC from E in elevation. Now, this is point P. Okay, that's because the XY line is a, uh, an edge of the horizontal plane elevation. Now, I'm going to go parallel to line AC in plan. Okay parallel to line AC in plan. Now a common mistake students would do is go parallel to AC in elevation. They often tend to do that in skewed lines. Now, there we go. Right. To find point P in plan, I'm just going to drop P down okay, to plan. So there's point, okay, there's line EP. Now, if I want to find the true inclination of this line EP to the horizontal plane, I'm going to find its true length in elevation, or I could take an auxiliary. So I'm going to draw a line parallel to the XY line from letter E in plan. I'm going to rotate P up until it hits that parallel line. So this is P1. And I'm going to project that up until it touches the XY line. And then I'm going to join that 
to letter E. And I'm going to measure that angle and write in true inclination because this is a true length. So I'm getting 42 degrees. So true inclination, true length. of EP true inclination to HP. We want to get letter F, complete the projections of letter F. We have the height. True lengths of edges AF and CF of the plane ACF are 70 millimeters and 80 millimeters respectively. Complete the projections of the triangle ACF. Remember, if the line is parallel to the XY line in plan, it's a true length in elevation, and if it's parallel to the XY line in elevation, it's a true length in plan. So A and F have the same altitude and elevation, so that means it's going to be a true length in plan. So true length in plan. Now, okay. F rests along, okay, F rests along um, the same altitude as A uh, in elevation, which is 10. And we're going to set our compass to 80. And we're going to swing the true length of C to F, the true length of C to F in elevation. So the true length of C to F in elevation. Now, so there's, okay, a position of F in elevation there. Now, that would mean that F has to be down along this line in plan because this is the true length DL of C to F. So that means it has to be parallel to the XY line in plan. Okay, and then we're going to rotate it back to where it should be resting. So we need to rotate it. Now, because A to F is parallel to the XY line in elevation, it's a true length in plan. So the true length of A to F is 70. So I'm going to set my compass to 70, and I'm going to swing an arc from A in plan. And where that intersects is point F in plan. And then I can bring this up to elevation. And that's the position of F in elevation. So I can join F to C, F to A, F to C in plan, and F to A in plan. And that's it. Thank you.